Hello guys, good evening. Welcome to the session today. Hope you all can hear me. Can you guys confirm once? Am I audible? <clears throat> good evening, sir. Yes. Yes, audible. Okay, great. Thanks for confirming. So let us start the session, guys. Okay, so this is our very first session on data engineering with Google Cloud Platform as well as Azure. In this session, in this particular course, we are going to talk about the data engineering how we can able to explore our data engineering activities on a Google Cloud platform as well as Azure. We are going to learn in this particular course. Okay, hope I'm audible. Hope you guys are able to see my screen as well. If you guys are facing any issues with the audio or the screen, please let me know. Okay, so I'm proceeding further. <clears throat> our course is data engineering with Google Cloud plus Azure. That means we are going to learn about the data engineering first we are going to experiment our data engineering activities in the google cloud platform and also we are going to see the data engineering activities in the azure platform as well <clears throat> okay so what is the agenda for today's session if you ask me sir the agenda for today's session is what is data engineering okay i am going to talk about what is data engineering okay so if i wanted to become a data engineer what are the roles that we have to uh, focus on? We are going to see it. And what is the role of a data engineer? What the data engineer do daily basis? Let us try to understand that is also. And in the next topic, we are going to see the overview of the Google Cloud Platform. What is actually the Google Cloud Platform? What is this Azure Cloud Platform? And what are the benefits of using these cloud platforms? We are going to see that in the second session, second point. And the third point we are going to see is that detailed course curriculum. I am going to talk about the detailed course curriculum. What are the cloud basics we are going to focus on? And what are the data engineering tools that we are going to focus on? One by one, we are going to see it here. And now after that, we are going to see the course details, right? The course details such as what are our course timings? And how do we provide the notes to you? What is the course material? And how do we provide the recordings? All of those details we are going to discuss here. Okay, so this is the agenda of our today's session, guys. So first thing we are going to see what is data engineering. And after that is GCP and Azure overview and detailed course curriculum. And after that, we are going to see the course details, right? So this is all about we are going to see today, guys. So before we move on to the sessions, I'm going to introduce myself first. My name is Sheikh Saidul. I am currently working as a solution architect contact and I also a consultant at Databricks, everyone. So I work at solution architect as a full time at contact and I'm also a consultant at Databricks as a <clears throat> as a part time you can think of. Right. <clears throat> and I have completed my master's degree from National Institute of Technology, Tiruchirappalli. So I'm graduated from the NIT Trichy, guys. Okay, I have total eight years of experience into the data and AI field. Okay, I worked as a data engineer. I worked as a DevOps engineer also. I have been teaching this uh, entire things from the last two and a half years on onwards. I've been teaching this one. I could say that I have taught AWS. I have taught Azure. I have taught GCP also. In this particular course, we are going to see about GCP as well as Azure. And when it comes to my certifications, I am certified 2x in the GCP, two times and two times certified in the Azure, and two times certified in the Databricks, Python, and multiple other certifications also I have it. So this is all about me, guys. So hope you guys remember me as a Sheikh Saidul. Okay, so let us proceed further with our very, very first topic. That is, what is data engineering? Right. So what is data engineering, guys? So we must understand what is data engineering first because we are going to learn about and we wanted to become a data engineer. If you go outside, if someone is if you ask someone a senior position or a manager position, what is one of the trending job in the current market? You They say is that data engineer. OK, data engineer is there from last 30 years. Data engineer will be, data engineering roles will be there after 30 years also. Okay, so data engineering career is one of the trending job all the time. All time. It is a trending job. I am going to tell you guys. So the very first thing let us try to understand is what is data engineering, right? 
so what is data engineering okay <clears throat> I am going to give you a very simple example that is so we may be getting the data from some different different applications isn't it so you may be interacting with some application maybe you go to some Flipkart in the morning and you try to explore some of the products and you wanted to order some product the moment you try to do a transaction there gets the data generated Okay, so you wanted to go outside, you are booking a Ola or Uber cab. Again, the data getting generated. And you wanted to have food, so you ordering in ordering it from the Zomato. Again, the data getting generated. So the moment the people are interacting with an application, the moment they are interacting with an application, the data is getting generated. And it is getting huge and huge. Okay, so not only from the application, the data will also come in from some file formats, right? So if you go from a production firms or a medical firms, so they actually what happens is that they enter the data in the form of a CSV file or Excel files you might have seen, right? So you also get a data coming from in the form of a CSV file formats or a JSON file formats, Avro or Parquet or whatever it is. So you have the data that is there in file formats also. Similarly, sir, I have the data that is coming from some database. Someone is hosted a database and there is a data in the database and you need to use it. <clears throat> Again, there is a data that is coming from some databases. It can be a MySQL or a SQL server or a PostgreSQL. And you have the data that is coming from some IoT devices. Right, IoT devices nowadays very very famous. The sensor devices. Okay, so nowadays if you buy a car, sometimes you get a message from the, you get a message in your uh, in your mobile saying that your battery in your battery is very that it is not properly healthy. You try to come to the nearest service center. Right, so such a kind of a things are happening. It is because of the sensor devices. The sensor device in your car gets always in gets an information of the car and they try to use it for the analysis purpose. Okay, so it will try to understand. It will be very useful for you to understand about your car, whether your health, uh, the car health, such as the battery health or uh, the motor health, the whatever it is. The functions will be there right different different things so it will be very useful right so what is happening here you are getting the data from some application you are getting the data from some file format you are getting the data in the form of a databases or you get a data from some iot devices or sensor devices sir i have a very huge amount of a data what is it about so these are all data sources sir I have the data that is coming from these data sources. Sir, why we are talking about this data? Why this data is very much important? Okay, this data is directly money, guys. For some of the companies, this data is nothing but a money. Nowadays, the data is nothing but money, guys. So how it is money, sir, can you explain? If you ask me, sir, the moment you have the data that is coming from the multiple data sources, if you try to understand this data, if you try to understand this data, this data gives you some you kind of... hear your voice. Guys, can you guys hear me or not? Can you guys confirm once? Yes, Am we I can. Audible? Yeah, you are yeah, audible. Can. Thank you. Yeah, audible. Great. Yeah. Guys, those, yeah, audible. Yes. those who are not able to hear me clearly, what you have to do is that rejoin it. Okay? Just rejoin please yeah so what where are we we are getting the data that is coming from the multiple data sources so what is our agenda we first understand this data so what the business says is that you understand this data the moment you understand this data this gives you some kind of a insights this gives you some kind of a insights these insights are very much useful for the businesses to improve okay it is very useful for you to improve the business so for any company for any business what is the main purpose they wanted to improve their business 
they wanted to improve their business day by day if you wanted to improve your business you need to understand your data okay you need to understand your data those are the companies who are focusing on the data engineering they are the ones now you are seeing in a very good and very in a proper shape but those who did not worry about the data engineering and data analysis they are at the backwards okay so whatever the data that is coming from for example you are running any business maybe for example let us try to take a flipkart flipkart is a e-commerce e-commerce platform so flipkart may be having the sales data that is coming from some application Flipkart may be having some kind of a CSV files or a JSON files that is coming from some product details or some databases like front end database or a back end database or maybe having some kind of IoT devices. Now the Flipkart wanted to under or improve their business. Flipkart wanted to improve their business. What is meant by business improvement, sir? Business improvement can be increasing the customer count or can be increasing their sales or can be increasing the customer satisfaction can be increasing the customer custom other things related to the customer right whatever it is so if you wanted to improve the business you need to understand the data properly we need to understand the data properly the moment you understand the data properly it gives you some kind of a insights these insights are very useful for the business improvement so this is what we call it as a data engineering guys this is high highly overview i'm just get i'm just giving you a generic information here if you wanted to improve your business you need to understand the data or analyze the data properly the moment you analyze the data properly it gives you some kind of insights those insights uh, are very useful for you to improve the business so nowadays you are seeing the amazon big billion days or amazon live sales or whatever it is right so those are all comes from the insights only guys those are all comes from, comes from the data analysis only so why you guys are seeing such a kind of a uh, discount activities it is because of the one data engineer might have understand the business they got some kind of insights and they are improving their by for improving their business they came to a one of idea that is big billion days in flipkart okay amazon sales so these kind of a things are coming from the data engineering activities only data engineering is a one of the trending job one of the interesting job guys i'm telling you very very interesting job i'm going to tell you guys so very much interesting topics we are going to see in our upcoming sessions look at here sir if i wanted to understand the business so first we need to have the data so sir these are my data sources sir i would like to do the i mean i wanted to improve my business to improve the business you need to have the data in a single location we need to have the data in a single location so you extract the data from some application and you put it into the data lake and you extract the data from the files you put it into the data lake again from the databases you keep in the lake from the iot devices you keep in the lake so what we are trying to do sir we wanted to improve the business to improve the business we need to extract the data from the multiple data sources we need to put it into a one location called data lake sir what is this data lake what is this data lake sir a data lake is nothing but it is a lake okay in a lake you will be storing the water in a lake there will be a water similarly in a data lake there will be a huge amount of a data so that can be coming from the multiple multiple applications or multiple data sources okay that can be coming from the multiple applications or multiple data sources you are going to keep the data into the data lake it is a large repository to store your data into a single location okay so that is what so you get the data from these data sources you store it here in a single location okay and after that what we will do sir and you have to understand one thing that whatever the data that we got from the raw data so this is raw data sources only this data can we use it directly for the analysis sir can we directly use it for the analysis no we cannot directly use it for the analysis the minimum common sense says is that it may have some kind of issues in the data 
it may have some kind of issues so from my experience i'm telling you guys for sure the data that you got from the data sources may have some kind of a duplicates may have some kind of an extra null values unnecessary data unnecessary columns additional columns so many things are there guys so the data that we got from the raw data sources may have some kind of issues such as duplicate data will be there null values will be there unnecessary data will be there unnecessary columns also there so many things are there so we can't directly use this data for the analysis we can't directly use this data for the analysis so that is the reason we have a one more step in the data engineering activity that is data processing so you extract the data from this data lakes you are going to process it what is mean by processor the processing is nothing but cleaning the data processing is nothing but cleaning the data cleaning the data means removing the duplicates removing the null values removing the unnecessary columns removing the unwanted data from it okay so we wanted to clean the data or enrich the data or add some kind of a value to the data we add some kind of a value to the data so that the data can be used for the analysis purpose the data can be used for the analysis purpose because if i have the problems in the data i cannot be able to analyze it properly i cannot be able to analyze it properly so that is the reason we are going to analyze the data in the data warehouse okay so we first extract the data in the extract the data to the data lake so we first store the data because this application may be coming from some other server this files are coming from some other location so this databases are com coming up from some other server so we wanted to have the data in a single location that is our data lake and once we got to know the data is there in the data lake we are going to process it to clean the data process the data or enrich the data or clean the data properly prepare the data for the analysis once the data is pro properly processed we wanted to do the analysis so that is where we are doing it in the data warehouse so the data warehouses comes up with a built-in sql engine so sql query engine which is capable of running the sql queries so with the help of the sql you can able to analyze the data in the data warehouse okay with the help of the sql you can able to analyze the data in the data warehouse everyone so this is where we do the analysis okay the moment you do the analysis you store the data in the tables and this table or data is very much important for the downstream people such as power bi or tableau or anywhere or machine learning so the on top of this data only the machine learning people will create a machine learning models on top of it or there can be a data scientist who creates a future trends or there can be a business group who directly use this data for the uh, decision making to directly use this data for the decision making so this is what is data engineering everyone this is what is data engineering in the data engineering we have these many steps okay so we have the data sources and we also have the data sync we have the data sources and we also have the data sync we extract the data from the data sources we store it into the data lake and we process it we analyze it and we, uh, we send this analyzed data to the bi or machine learning or a data scientist or a business groups okay so this is what and during this process we also ensure that data is accurate and complete okay we wanted to validate the data in each and every stage isn't it okay we wanted to validate the data in each and every stage so that's where the data governance and monitoring comes into the picture and we don't want it to do the things manually we don't want it to do the things manually so that's the reason we create the pipeline so that is we need to monitor the pipelines also all the time okay data governance ensures that the data is accurate throughout the platform and it is complete 
and one more is monitor monitoring your pipelines or systems making sure that they are working in a proper order or they are working in a smooth manner okay so this is what is data engineering guys a data engineering is a process of extracting the data storing the data processing the data for the analysis purpose this data can be used by the bi or a machine learning or a data scientist or a business group and during this process we ensure that the data is accurate and complete throughout the platform so this is what is data engineering everyone to do these activities, there are plenty of the tools are there. There are multiple data lake systems are there. Data processing tools are available. Data warehouse tools are also available. We will see in our upcoming sessions, what are these data lakes and how many tools are there? I'm going to talk about it. Okay, so if I have to talk about the names of those tools, so what is the data lake? What are the tools that we can able to use the data lake means a data lake is nothing but a, a storage location guys a data lake is a storage location where you are going to store the data in a one single location this is a storage location guys a storage location and it is scalable and it is scalable and secure solution so this is what is data lake a data lake is a one of the storage location which should be scalable and secured location and the examples for the data lake if you ask me sir in google cloud platform we can use the gcs in azure cloud platform we can use the adls nothing but a azure data lake storage system and if you go to the aws you have a s3 okay so these are the three tools <clears throat> these are the three tools you can able to use it for the uh, data lakes okay in each cloud platform you have this one and you can also use hdfs also as a data lake which is a traditional system which is a traditional system guys so this is what is data lake everyone similarly data processing sir can you talk about the data processing yes so data processing is nothing but processing the data okay processing the data that means we wanted to clean the data or enrich the data or prepare the data for what purpose we are trying to do all of these things guys we wanted to do all of these things so that a later point of time we can analyze it okay in later stages we can analyze this data so if you wanted to analyze the data you need to have your data cleaned properly enriched properly or prepared properly for the analysis purpose Sir, can you tell me what are the data processing systems available? So there are plenty of the data processing systems available, guys. So, so you have data proc. You have in Google Cloud Platform, you have data proc and data flow. And if you go to Azure, you have a Azure Databricks. You have Azure Databricks. And if you go to the uh, emr if you go to the aws you have a emr also available so there are multiple tools are available to clean the data enrich the data process the data so such as data proc data flow data bricks and emr elastic map reduce so these are the multiple tools available guys okay so this is how it is okay yeah these are all actually came from the spark only spark is a traditional system i would say Okay, similarly for data warehousing. Sir, can you name some of the warehouse tools? Yes. Sir, there are multiple data warehousing. What is the main agenda in the data warehousing? A data warehouse, the entire enterprise data, you are going to store it here. So this is a location mainly created for the analysis. The mainly, this is a location where you are going to have the entire data and you are going to perform the analysis for the BI. So the main workload, is bi so the downstream for the data warehouse is bi workloads so the main purpose of the warehouse is to provide the support for the bi workloads and here you are going to analyze the data properly so how do you analyze it here you are going to use the sql guys so with the help of the sql language you are going to analyze the data okay similarly so while you are doing the data processing what languages we can use if you ask me sir here we can use the sql mainly we can use PySpark. We are going to focus on the PySpark only. So these are the tools. And for data warehousing, we are strictly to use the SQL only, guys. So that is something. 
okay so can you guys uh, name it sir if you ask me what are the examples for the data warehouse so you have plenty of the examples such as bigquery in google cloud platform you have bigquery if you go to the azure you have synapse okay you have the synapse analytics if you go to the aws you have redshift you have redshift and you also have a snowflake okay you also have a snowflake so these are the multiple data warehouse tools available guys so these are the multiple data warehouse tools and this is what is so you have to understand so that's the reason i am giving you some idea guys these are very much important tools this is one and here you have data processing this is our second one and we have our third one this is your third one okay so so this is your data warehouses third one so i would like to give you some kind of a details on this one so that's the reason i have mentioned here guys data lakes data processing and data warehousing and now you know what is data engineering what is data engineering guys a data engineering is a process of collecting the data organizing the data preparing the large amounts of the data so that it can be easily used and analyzed properly okay so the data processing the main intention of the data processing is to collect the data properly organize the data properly prepare the large amounts of the data for the analysis purpose okay during this process it may involve we may be creating the systems or infrastructure that allow us to capture the data store the data process the data and analyze the data okay because you can't directly do the data engineering because you need to create the systems or pipelines that allow you to automatically capture the data because we don't want it to do the things manually first day you do the things the manually second day but later point of time if you wanted to automate it you need to create a system or a pipeline which will allow you to capture the data store the data process the data and access the data efficiently and automatically so this is the process of data engineering guys okay so this is a process of data engineering and one more thing what is the role of a data engineer if you ask me whatever we have seen that is what is role of a data engineer only if i have to talk about the person who works on data ingestion right so a data engineer may work on the data ingestion that means he has some source of the data he need to efficiently extract the data from that source and he has to put it into some destination location right so that is what is data ingestion and he may be working on the data storage and management so because he need to create some kind of a storage solution he need to come up with the efficient storage solution and it should be scalable and it should be secure so such a kind of a system he has to create it and manage it properly he has to create it and properly manage it guys and one more thing is that so he will be working on the data processing also okay her data processing is something that we have just seen clearing the data pre processing the data transforming the data for the analysis purpose here we may use multiple uh, code such as sql python pyspark we are going to use it okay and after that we will be ensuring the data is quality and governance so that is making sure that the data is quality enough and the data is properly accurate and complete and one more is we are going to create the pipelines making sure that automatically these pipelines are running smoothly behind the scene so that we don't have to intervene so the human intervention is not required to properly analyze the data because automatically these data pipelines are going to be scheduled and it is running at some point of time every day to capture the data process the data analyze the data and send the data to the downstreams and uh, one more important aspect as a data engineer is that we need to know how to optimize the data properly so because if some query is taking a lot of time or some code is taking a lot of time we need to make sure that it should be running in an optimized fashion so that's the reason one of the important uh, factor for the data engineer is to focus on the performance optimization performance optimization ensure that your code or query or pipeline is running smoothly and efficiently okay so that is what it is and the final point about the role of a data engineer is that 
we should be monitoring and maintenance our pipelines monitor our pipeline so that it is running properly without any errors maintenance is that sometimes uh, there can be some kind of upgrades or patches or anything okay we need to maintain our pipelines also okay so this is what is data engineer do every day guys he will be working on the data ingestion he will also be working on the data storage and management he will also work on the data processing he should be working on the data quality and governance he will be working on the data pipeline creations he should be working on the performance optimizations and he should be working on the monitoring and maintenance okay so this is what is role of a data engineer everyone very very important all of these concepts we are going to see it in a very detailed way so how do we ingest the data process the data okay so this is all about the data engineering and the role of a data engineer and what are the tools we are going to use it related to the data engineering data warehousing data lakes okay so now i would like to talk about the google cloud platform as well as azure cloud platform i would like to talk about both of them guys because we are going to learn about these things only in our upcoming sessions right for that one what are these cloud platforms first sir you might have heard about the azure okay you might have heard about the azure cloud platform isn't it you might have heard about the aws you might have heard about the gcp so these are all the three leading cloud providers guys so what are these one if you ask me sir these are the three leading cloud providers these are the three leading cloud providers sir what are the cloud providers provides us can anyone tell me guys can you guys guess it what are the cloud providers provides us anyone please storage space cloud? any other things yeah that is one answer correct storage yeah any other things guys application what services application services yeah that is one thing and any other infrastructure platform infrastructure. services correct infrastructure services platforms different different platforms yes different different platforms it is going to be supporting you and any other guesses yeah these are all perfect answers only yes any other guesses guys hosting servers servers it will provide yes that is also correct answer yes any other things Okay. A complete data center for uh, running a business. Correct. Yeah, it it provides you a kind of a, a simple and small data center for you to run your entire things. Correct. That's a very good answer. Yes, that's also correct answer. Yeah, in a simple way, I am going to tell you the definition, guys. So these are the leading cloud providers: Azure, a, sorry, Azure, AWS, and GCP. These are the three leading cloud providers. these three leading cloud providers provides us cloud computing services cloud computing services okay so what they provide means they provide the cloud computing services what are these cloud computing services sir why it is very useful for me let me going to tell you sir aws azure and gcp these three are the three leading cloud providers guys they provide you the cloud computing services these services are very useful for the organizations why it's because when you are working in a company assume that you are working in a company guys assume that you are working in a company okay there is a company for every company they will be having some client for that client you are actually started working with them so the client having some kind of a requirement so for that requirement there will be a project and you are the one of the project member in that so for every project there will be having a some requirement right so there is a project requirement i would say here for every client there will be having some kind of a projects right there will be having a some kind of a requirements to fulfill this requirement to fulfill the project requirements sometimes we need to store the data isn't it sometimes your client may be asking you to store the data 
or process the data or analyze the data or sometimes visualize the data right sometimes it is he, they are asking you to visualize the data or sometimes governance and monitoring also okay so governance for every project they are asking some kind of a typical requirement so some per, some client is asking you to store the data process the data analyze the data visualize the data governance data governance also or maybe some client asking you to create some application or nothing but build some application building the application deploying the application scaling the applications and services okay scaling and in some uh, project they are working on the machine learning model so you need to create the ml model you need to register the model you need to deploy the model and you need to maintain the model maintenance model maintenance and this is something related to it and there can be some kind of other projects also maybe networking creating some networking components so these are all the project requirements right so when you are working in a company either you may be working on some application deployment creating and scaling or you may be working on the data engineering activities such as storing the data processing the data analyzing the data or maybe working with the big data components or when you are working as a machine learning you may be creating some model registering some model or deploying some model or maybe you if you are a networking engineer you are creating some kind of a networking vpc networks or subnets or all of those networking components you may be creating so whatever the things you wanted to do it whatever the things you wanted to do it cloud computing services are providing you okay the cloud computing services are there so that you can use the these services to store the data or process the data or analyze the data or visualize the data what is that one sir so the cloud providers are providing you the services to store the data process the data analyze the data or build the application deploy the application or scale the application or create some model register or whatever it is so if you wanted to do your all of these activities you have a separate services available in the cloud platforms you have a separate services in the cloud platforms so for example sir if i go to the google cloud platform if i go to the google cloud platform sir i wanted to store the data so if you wanted to store the data you can go to you can go to a cloud storage okay so what is this one this is one of the cloud computing service only what is this cloud storage they are providing you the cloud computing services so that you can go inside it and you can store the data here so if i wanted to store it i click on upload files i'm going to store it here for example i have this one of the file csv file i'm going to click on it so that it will be uploaded to here so what i am doing it here so these are the cloud computing services so that you can able to store the data sir if i wanted to analyze the data i can go to the bigquery okay so cloud computing services are provided by the cloud providers cloud providers are providing the cloud computing services these services are very useful for the organizations these services are very useful for the organizations to fulfill their project requirements if the project requirement of anything it can be anything whether it is storing the data or whether it is building some applications or whether it is creating some model or whether it is working with the networking okay so cloud computing services are very useful for the organization to do all of these activities are fulfilling their projects so this is what is nothing but a cloud providers guys so we have total three leading cloud providers are there they provide you the cloud computing services we can focus on those services and such as aws azure and gcp in our sessions we are going to focus on azure and gcp because for data engineering activities for data engineering aws is not that much famous azure and gcp are very very famous for the data engineering activities guys most of the projects are there very very plenty of the projects are there you can go and check it out okay we can go and check it out so we have azure and gcp they are the leading cloud providers they provide you the cloud computing services they provide you the cloud computing services so that you can focus on the data engineering activities 
you can focus on the data engineering activities in our upcoming sessions we will see a lot of things so now this is what is cloud platforms guys so this is the simple introduction of azure and gcp in our upcoming sessions in the next session i would try to give you even more details also okay i would try to give you even more details also okay so azure and gcp are the two leading cloud providers they provide you the cloud computing services these services are very useful for the organizations to fulfill their project requirements okay so that is what it is right so now we have seen a, a small introduction towards our cloud platform so the same definition will be here also even for the aws and azure also so it is a cloud computing service offering you can see here azure cloud platform is a cloud computing service offerings it will provide you the or it will offer you the cloud computing services here also it is a suite of cloud computing services provided by the google what they are providing they are also providing you the cloud computing services so both will provide you the cloud computing services for the companies to fulfill their project requirement to build the application or deploy the application or scale the applications and services in the cloud okay so that is what it is guys now i would like to tell you about the detailed course curriculum i would like to talk about the detailed course curriculum guys now so let me go and show you the detailed course curriculum let me open the pdf for that so here we have the detailed course curriculum guys which we are going to talk about in our upcoming sessions so google cloud plus azure data engineering training with the real world projects and case studies okay with the real world projects and case studies so the role that we are looking for is cloud data engineer guys we wanted to become a data engineer in the cloud platform so the course duration will take 2.5 months and the mode of teaching is online the teaching english is teaching language is english and the trainer name is sheikh saidul and you can see google cloud platform with the azure training with the real world projects and case studies so we will be starting with our sir uh, sorry we will be starting with the uh, the cloud basics guys maybe in our next session we are going to start with the cloud basics gcp cloud basics we will talk about the gcp introduction what is gcp and the overview of the services and products and next we are going to talk about the gcp interfaces what are the gcp interfaces are available next we are going to talk about the gcp locations what are these gcp locations and we will talk about the gcp iam and admin okay so gcp iam and admin we will be talking about sorry in the gcp iam and admin we will see about what is identities what is roles and what is policy what is resource hierarchy these are all the details we are going to see it guys and after that we are learning about the linux basics also okay we are learning about the linux basics and we are also learning about the python for data engineers we are also seeing about the python for data engineers guys so we will be seeing about python for data engineers so here we are learning about the data types data structures programming if and else loops for loop and while loop exceptional handling file input output operations functions and classes so this is specifically for python for data engineers and after that we are going to enter into the data engineering tools we are going to see about the cloud storage cloud sql bigquery and uh, we will be talking about the data proc data flow cloud pubsub cloud composer cloud functions okay so all of these gcp data engineering tools we are going to see it one by one so we start with the cloud storage everyone we will see what is cloud storage and how do we work with the cloud storage after that what is cloud is sql and how we can able to work with cloud sql and what is bigquery and why we can why we are using the bigquery what is the architecture of the bigquery and how we can able to do the projects in the bigquery and then data proc what is data proc and here we are going to learn about the pyspark everyone in this session we are going to learn about the pyspark and data flow here we are going to learn about the apache beam and after that we are going to see about the pubsub cloud pubsub also what is cloud pubsub the detailed course curriculum is there our our admins will try to share you the course content you can go through it i am just giving you the overview and here we have cloud composer here we are going to take care of the workflow orchestration tool and how do we take care of the workflows here we are going to learn about it 
and here we have the cloud functions and event based solution and then we enter into the azure data engineering tools we will see the azure introduction after that we will be starting with adls azure data lake storage after that azure sql db and azure data factory okay azure data factory we see about the integration run times and linked services data sets pipelines activities triggers and we will be creating the pipelines here we are also taking care of the use cases also and projects and after that we are also learning about the databricks guys so uh, each and everything about the databricks such as delta lake tables unity catalog and the databricks work, workspace creation all the labs are created all the things we are going to see even with the case study also and by the end of the sessions what you can expect okay by the end of the session the students can expect about the proficient in the sql development api spark development skills apache beam development mastery dac creations with cloud composer notebooks workflows databric architecture planning and certification readiness so this is the course about guys so all the details are provided here in addition to this course as i told you in addition to this course we are teaching let the linux basics very much important for the data engineers we are teaching the python 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 for data engineers so we are teaching the python for data engineers that is also covered and we are learning about the pyspark we are learning about the pyspark we are also learning about the beam apache beam okay apache beam we are also learning about the data bricks okay so this is a big, i would say delta lake i will mention it as a delta lake okay all of these concepts we are going to see is in addition to the tools that we are covering these are the more of a programming concepts right so these are more of a programming concepts such as linux is a programming python is a programming apache spark and apache Bay. so in addition to the, the topics we are also additionally learning these things guys okay so all of these concepts we are going to see it guys a detailed course curriculum i have mentioned here okay so here we are covering the azure and sorry azure and gcp basics and we are also covering the data engineering services okay yeah now i would like you to tell me if you guys have any questions you can ask me guys i want you guys to tell me if anyone have any questions you can ask me now please Hello. raise your hand yeah yes hardik yeah yeah good evening uh so it was a pretty good session and we are it was a very useful session i think and yeah, thank you. Uh, the yeah. question what i had is uh whatever the task which are we uh, which we are going to perform in gcp either on in, or in azure so that would Correct. need some uh, credits uh, to Correct. use like Correct. for the long term so Correct. i i think that the free credits may expire within a week or 10 days so how we are going to uh, maintain that we are working in a live environment throughout these two and a half months. Correct. So that's, I got your point. For the GCP, for the GCP, I am going to tell you how to create a free trial account. And this account of validity 90 days. Okay. 90 days. They were providing you almost $300 in credit. Okay. So you can able to almost use it for 90 days. If you are working on 90 days also, you cannot be able to burn the $300. Okay. So that is what is for the GCP. Okay. Okay. And after for the Azure also, I will tell you Azure also having free trial account for the $200. Okay. Azure also having the free trial account, but it is not for 300, but it is for the 200 trial account okay only for 200 until you complete the 200 dollars you can start you can able to use it but the thing about that azure is that some of the resources you may not be able to use it but the data engineering perspective you can we can use adf adls databricks no issues okay i'm oh, going to see so that is there yeah so as yeah. a data engineering perspective both are same you don't have to pay a single penny i would suggest to you that here we may be uh, spending two rupees here it is totally free Two yeah, rupees yeah. or two rupees is only for the verification purpose. Yes, yeah. Yeah, verification. Right. And my Got next it. question is, uh, you when you were explaining about the GCP, uh, you did mention the cloud functions. Okay. Correct. So there, where I think we will be able to write of the course. scripts, right? 
of course of course our agenda is to make you a data engineer guys yes. so that's the purpose so in the cloud functions we are going to create a python script so i'm going to show you the notes also guys here i have the notes so everything we are going to see it here so you will be i we are going to provide you the resume templates interview introduction project one i'll talk about it but you have asked me about uh, the python because you are going to we are going to learn about the python data types data structures python programming and modular programming the same concepts we are going to use in the cloud functions okay what is cloud okay. function and how we are going to create the scripts okay so entire things are already available i am going to teach you in front of you only i am going to implement it the same way you have to implement the same thing in the free try record okay so sure very nice my last yeah. question would be yeah. like yeah. Uh, what kind of projects we are working like we, uh, we will go through the conventional projects we uh, or the or some unique projects or uh, what kind so, of projects we will uh, work on and what are the trending projects we are going to focus on it first yes. as a data engineer they are going to focus on the data migra database migration that is one thing right wherever you go someone say are you worked on data migration yes okay that is one of the project we are covering and etl pipelines we need to create the etl pipe uh, nothing but a data pipelines right so stream or sorry batch pipelines we have to create it right and as well as streaming pipelines we need to have a exposure to create the streaming pipelines and we need to have a uh, uh, you know what we call it as a data warehousing or what we call it as analysis project okay analysis okay analysis project we need to create it and one is data migration batch pipelines streaming pipelines analysis and we are also work on the workflow orchestrations okay workflow yeah workflow why it is coming like that workflow project workflow orchestration guys so you need to focus on workflow orchestration project also or pipeline i would call it as pipelines and the final thing data ingestion i forgot it data ingestion also so the re you need to focus on how you can able to ingest the data so all of these things we are going to cover you will be having a database migration don't trigger, don't uh, actually trust me you can see here i've been teaching the same thing from the last two and a half years right so you go to the cloud sql you see here data migration project is there or not from the on premises yeah. mysql to the cloud sql it is there you go to yeah, the data yeah. proc end to end batch pipeline is there data flow you go ahead here end to end streaming pipeline is there go to the bigquery case study one case study two uh, analysis projects are there and uh, you go to the data proc for you assignments are provided assignment one assignment two assignment three case study one case study is also covered uh, and uh, here assignment for the cloud function two and you will also be provided with the data bricks if i go for the data bricks end to end workflow is created medallion architecture streaming auto loader everything guys i'm telling you because i've been i've not just started today or yesterday right i've been teaching it from the last two years so you you are in a safe hands i would say yeah and one more thing in addition to that if you wanted to go for a job our main focus is to make you job ready right so we are providing the resume templates interview introduction it is like what you have to do what you have to say in the interview also i have prepared already for you and uh, how do you have to explain your project one and architecture of the project one and the project two and their architecture of the project two what is you require everything is covered it is a full packed course for the gcp plus azure if one wanted to become a gcp data engineer or azure data engineer this is the course guys i'm telling you okay yeah, yeah, yeah. i feel that those projects uh, uh, cover cover almost all the aspects of uh, Correct. Uh, use okay. cases uh, Correct. Are more, much appreciated and uh, and uh, after the attending this we can also attend the exam we can also give the exam also right correct so yeah. that's yeah. where i i was actually coming to if you one wanted to go for certification we have already yeah. the certification dumps also how you have to prepare yourself in terms of the scenario of the questions how the questions they are asking what type of a question so here already the dumps what of what are my previous students says is that sir out of your dumps 15 to 20 questions are repeated so i would able to easily crack it so so here those are the dumps also readily available guys for you okay you can able to easily crack it and sql coding questions python coding questions data engineering theoretical questions okay yeah
all the things are here. Hello. Yeah. yeah. So those yes, that answers Satish. all of yeah. my questions. Thank you so much. Thank you, Hardik. Yes, I think you have covered a quite a few questions, but those are all very much important questions. Yes, Satish, yeah. you have any questions? Thank you questions? so much. Yeah. Thank much. you. Yeah. Do you cover Apache Spark also here? Yeah? Of course. That's very much important for the data engineers, isn't it? Okay. Right. Introduction to the Spark. What is Spark? Why is Spark? Oh, sorry. What is Hadoop? Why the Hadoop came into the picture? What is Spark and how it is different from the Hadoop? And you can able to see what is Spark, the Spark ecosystem, Spark architecture, and how do you do that? What is PySpark? And we are going to create the PySpark. Uh, what is data proc? We create the data proc clusters here. And uh, how do we create a cluster? Lab sessions, case study one, case study two, assignment one, and two. So everything is covered. Don't worry about that. Of course. Okay. okay. For sure, because as a data engineer, we should learn about the Spark and PySpark. Yes. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, anyone? Yeah, this uh, uh, is it uh, Scala is required for uh, uh... Any, anyone is fine, guys. It's not that you have to learn Scala or something. It's it is like this. Either you are learning the PySpark or Scala. Anyone is enough. Okay. okay. I would suggest learn the PySpark because out of 100 jobs, 70 to 80 jobs is for the PySpark. Only 20 to 15 jobs only for the Scala. Okay. I would suggest okay. you to go for the PySpark because a very cute five i mean very good demand for the PySpark developers yeah okay thank you yes what will be the duration of these classes is it yes. daily or it is daily guys i mean to say monday to friday and for next two and a half months monday to friday okay. for yeah every day how long will it the one hour. be one hour one hour 15 minutes okay yeah okay there and is any timings any batch timings you have for this the batch timings the same timings, eight to nine. Okay. okay. Yeah, the same timings, guys. So I would like to tell you again. So, guys, so the timings are same. Sorry, the timings are eight to nine p.m. every day, Monday to Friday. Actually, I should mention Monday to Friday, and uh, we will be having Saturday Sunday. You will be having the assignments. Okay, Saturday Sunday is for the assignments. You have to complete it. Yeah. And when is this uh, starting? So from the next week onwards, for sure. Yeah. So is SQL a prerequisite? SQL is a prerequisite, guys. SQL is a prerequisite, but uh, that for that also, our admin will help you how you can uh, learn the SQL also. Okay. We have already a dedicated SQL things are there for you guys. So that's because SQL is like, uh, uh, I mean, if you sit for like five hours, you can able to just learn it. Okay, so for this course, SQL is uh, uh, prerequisite, I would say. And basics, if you know, we are going to learn about the development in the course. Okay, yeah. Thank you, sir. Yes, any other questions, anyone? Any, May yes. I know what's the database size, size of the database we are going to have? Because so, uh, the database size is less, uh, then everything feels very easy. No, that's not how it works, right? So it's a, it's not about the size of the data. See, if you have a challenge that how can able to store, how much amount of a data you can able to store. That's a challenge, but that's not the concept, right? So we focus on the concepts as a data engineer. We don't worry about how much amount of a data you are going to deal with. We create a robust pipelines that can handle any amount of data. See. So the thing is that today I'm creating a cluster small so that I can able to deal with small amount of data. Okay. But the concepts while I am going to teach with a small amount of data is going to be very useful that tomorrow if you are going to create a bigger cluster and with a large amount of data will be helping you the same thing because rather than we focus on the data, we focus on the concepts to how we can able to process that much heavy amount of data or a huge amount of data because we wanted to become a big data engineer only. It is not that we are just learning some sample concepts and leaving it here. So our main agenda to uh, move forward as a data engineer is to make the things, uh, uh, you know, uh, in a big data way so that we are mastering the big data in this with the help of the SQL or Python or PySpark or whatever it is. Okay. Apache Beam is one of the framework also again. So that is what we are learning here. And of course, so here and there, we will be taking a SQL database. We will be having already the SQL databases. We will be taking that. And sometimes we generate a sample data. We, I have some generators also. 
and I'm going to use those generator. Maybe I have it here somewhere. Okay. I'll also show you guys maybe in the next session so that you guys get an idea. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the main reason I ask you is like uh, we need to mostly focus on uh, optimization. So optimization sample data will be much easier. But uh, when the database size is no, like no, no, no. that's not that's not the uh, that's not how you do you look, how do you look at the things that's not how do we look at the things the thing is that because uh, as long as you real time work on the company that's where only you look at the large amount of the data see the performance optimization when you are working with we need to have a terabytes of the data right we need to have a terabytes of the data so we don't uh, have that much amount of a data for our concepts but the thing is that how do you optimize it? What are the partitioning? What are the clustering? What are these Kashi methods? So how does this actually help you to all of those things? We are going to see it. We are going to, uh, you know, write a syntax for that, for that also. But we may not be having the data, but we are going to exhibit those concepts. We are going to write the code for that. But we cannot be able to practically look at that, how the data is behaved like that. Everywhere, you, even though not only this course, you go outside and look at any course that they are teaching the GCP data engineer or Azure data engineer, they may be telling you that we are dealing with a large amount of data that's not practically possible in the demo sessions. Okay. Yeah. A few days back, I encountered a similar problem in okay. GCP. Okay. Actually, um, uh, there were three to four uh, CSV files. Uh -huh. Yeah, so the files which were having records around uh, 30,000, 40,000 records, those were getting, uh, as we upload in the portal, which was made on the uh, Python Flask application. Uh -huh. So those were reflecting in the bucket, uh -huh. but um, we have also written a script uh, so that uh, the data should get automatically pushed into the BigQuery. Uh -huh. So the files with the less number of rows were getting pushed automatically. And those were reflecting in my tables. Okay. But the file with around uh, 2.5 to 3 lakh rows mm -hmm. was not getting reflected automatically in the BigQuery. That's where okay. the validation is. So that's where you do the validations, right? So, so I have some data, I'm loading it, but the thing is that it is not loading the problem. So that's yeah, where yeah, the validation yeah. How do we validate it? So that comes, okay. that concept come into the picture, yes. Okay, 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 okay. okay. I see, right. I see. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions, anyone, please? Uh, here in the course, we are covering relational database. Is there any uh, no SQL database required? No, data actually, in... no, actually not here, but we will be dealing with unstructured or semi structured data, but we are not dealing with any uh, no SQL databases here in this in this particular course. No. Okay. Is it required for data engineering? Is, Not uh, that much required. Almost all the 90% of our databases are SQL databases only. Okay. okay. Yeah. We do Thank mainly you. most of the times we work as a SQL databases only. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Any other questions, anyone? Okay, so if you do not have any questions, any questions, even a simple question also, if you have it, guys, this is the right time. If you do not have any questions, we can wind up the session and we will meet in the next session, guys. Yeah, I think we are uh, just having a small question regarding yes. the logistic part. Yeah. So in between uh, in November or maybe I might be busy or other students might also have some schedules. Correct, correct, correct. Time. So if we if in case we miss any class, so will we get a chance to see the recordings or anything later? Of course, I am writing the same thing here, right? So okay. we will be having a daily recorded sessions. You will be having an access to it. Okay. Every day, the once the session is completed, within next to two or three hours, they are going to upload it to the drive. So they will be providing you the access to the drive. You can watch or you can watch it at your time. Okay. Okay. So that solves. The problem yeah yes and you will also be having an access to my material and at any time if you wanted to do need the code or any code and data sets or everything is here okay that's also there yes what if uh, i have a question uh-huh yes please. Uh, what if uh, I, uh what if uh, someone uh, didn't understand the concept and uh, wanted to like again come back, again come back so can, can can we have a appointment 
or like we need no. to see see if you're not able to understand something you can ask me at that point of time itself i can try to explain it one more time why do we have to wait for the next day okay so if something is not able to understand it i'll try to give it in a one more different way and i'll try to give an examples also and if you're not able to understand we have the material and we have the watch we have the recording also if you are getting confused somewhere you can watch the recording again try to understand it okay that's all there and tomorrow if you got the same doubt you can again ask in the in the same session itself so that it is clarified for you right so that's how okay yes actually sir i i am working uh, in in the last uh, last thing like that is the bi i am working in power bi actually so there are a lot of tools to learn so that's why that's why i was asking no don't worry about that don't worry about that see uh, from this course there are people who got the job they come from the non it background lucky that you are already there in the it background that you already know most of the things no you know about the data at least but there are people who are coming from the non it such as production firms pharmacy as well as this um, mechanical uh, jobs so they got the job with this course i'm telling you guys okay don't worry about it at least you are lucky that you are in the it and you lucky that you already know about the data right so that's very good for you i'm telling you yeah so just make yourself motivated that people are already coming from the different different uh, backgrounds and they are able to get the job okay okay actually actually i i am i was thinking uh, am i downgrading myself because uh, this is the later stage third stage that i'm working that is the intelligence bi power bi and all and, and yeah. the data engineering stuff uh, comes before that so should i like uh, no no down see here so i don't downgrade target... myself uh, and learn mm. all this or mm. should i go no 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 you I go may be thinking... to become a data scientist no 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 you may be thinking that the bi is the next level of data engineering no that's not the thing okay people think that data scientist and machine learning is far ahead of data engineer no i am telling you i have seen people so data engineering is the foundation guys data engineering is the foundation this ml or ai just came or just bi you whatever you guys are learning they came just now but if you are going for this course they will teach first this thing if you are going for ai they teach the data engineering if you go for bi they teach the data and you need to have the data engineering okay data engineering is a first no machine learning engineer no ai engineer no bi engineers are the trending jobs i am telling you the highly paid job is data engineering i am saying no one will no one actually worried about it but the thing is that the highly paid job is data engineering you go and check it out this is one of the highly paid job you may be go to the data uh, maybe youtube or somewhere you can check it out the highly paid job as a data engineer what i am want to expect i mean how people are expecting even more than the machine learning and ai also bi is just uh, a very small i would say it's very specific i wouldn't talk about it but data engineering and machine learning and ai comparatively data engineering is a highly paid job okay people think that machine learning and ai are the costliest courses but the thing is that data engineering is one of the promising and trending and highly paid job i would say because i've been there in the same industry from last 8 years i have seen and also ups and lows yeah hi sadik okay. okay thank you yes. sir for highlighting the scopes and trends about yes. data engineering yes hello yes, yes please uh i am a business uh, analytics students do, uh, doing my mba right now i just wanted to know like as a student uh, mm -hmm. will all these projects be useful for me in the future like of should course. i be doing uh, because i have sql and python in my syllabus right now so i just thought i could uh, See, that's work what on life projects. the moment you come out of as a, a student and you will be looking for a job and the moment if you get a if you are looking for interviews so these concepts actually very useful that is one thing and if you get a job as a data engineer you can easily comfortably work you don't have to hesitate it also you can comfortably work with this much of knowledge i'm telling you this is not just one year of knowledge two to year two years of knowledge it this course gives you three years of knowledge for you okay that much amount of a level of topics that we are going to cover in depth with the details of case studies assignment everything which is i'm telling you put an investment today and make yourself after 3 months you 
you you you yourself feel that i have spent a lot amount of money but uh, it is worth of spending it it is worth of spending it so that with this knowledge i can easily go to the it and can able to work easily crack the interviews so many people got the job from this course i'm telling you guys many people I, if i have to tell you the number it is 97 so far 90 this is the number that i know 97 is the number which i know but many people so far got the job from this course i am telling you from the last seven months yeah hello yes but yeah so i am a dba i am a dba mm -hmm. i have time past 10 years experience in dba so okay. i can able to manage and i can able to switch over the data engineering job of course anyone guys whoever you are if you are aspired to become a data engineer so that's what i have mentioned here whether you are a uh, data analyst or data scientist or software engineer or developer data or ETL tester or anything whoever you are whether you are coming from the IT or non IT okay whoever you are you can just come to this okay yeah, because of, I am not aware of the uh, spike park, uh, spark spark don't worry about that you will learn it right don't worry about it we are teaching it right you are going to learn it okay we are teaching it it's like that we start with A B C D and we end with the 10th class and we will be going for the job so that's how we start with abcd okay you can also learn abcd onwards right so we start with very basics and we go for the complex topics at the by the end yeah thanks thanks sir. yeah yeah thank you. hi Sadiq. one question yes. from me yes, yes, why thanks. not aws because aws is a leader yeah so, so le industry. yeah market leader yeah. Uh, aws is a market leader but AWS is not that much famous for the data engineering. Okay. Data engineering, but wherever you're having the service for the data engineering. Yes, right? it is having, it is having, but the thing is that those services are not uh, that much reliable compared to the Azure and GCP. Okay. Compared okay. to the Azure and GCP, they are not that much very famous. So if you are going for some kind of a machine learning or CI CD, AWS may be very famous, but for data engineering, big data, these tools are very famous. It's these are very for data. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. Azure and GCP. These big data activities, Azure and GCP is very famous in the community. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you get a very good opportunities comparatively. And I, from my experience, I have seen that uh, those who have created the AWS projects for the data engineering, they are moving out to the Azure and GCP now. Okay, they are again mm -hmm. moving out. Yeah. So that's how the I don't have the cloud background because uh, because I have worked with the SQL database as well, but okay. uh, I don't have the but but most of the uh, things um, people are saying go with the first AWS then go for the GCP as as well. Yeah. Is it same or uh, how it is? So after you learning, you will also you will get to know that AWS is. Also, one of the cloud provider like Azure and GCP. Now that for data engineering, Azure and GCP is in very trending and it will be there. Okay, so that's the reason we are spending. So maybe for DevOps or CI CD or machine learning, AWS may be famous, mm -hmm. but for data engineering, mm -hmm. Azure and GCP, the moment you learn one cloud, it is same for other clouds. Okay, that is also there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Any other questions, anyone? okay okay guys thank you all i think uh, this is it for today i think uh, in the next session we will see even more things and we will talk about even more doubts if you guys have any and we will try to start with a new topic and we will see how we can able to progress on it from there okay so that is how we will start with the very basics and we will go step by step step by step okay please try to connect with our admin and try to enroll yourself for the courses and get to know more about the details okay so that's how you guys have to proceed for that okay yeah thank you all have a great day and uh, you know my name right my name is sheikh saidul you can if you guys have any questions you can connect with our admin and they will connect with me if you guys have any questions you can always ask me okay yeah thank you guys